My name is Genevieve. I'm a paleoanthropologist and rock art researcher, and I study some of the oldest art in the world. I'm here again today with another episode of Cave Art 101, the field series, season three with World of Paleoanthropology. And I am starting this video off in a narrow canyon that I just climbed up. So there's my colleague Lena down there behind me at ground level. And if I turn, you can see how far up it still goes. So it seems like I'm starting a lot of the videos this way where we start in one spot and then we'll, we'll look at the art afterwards. But I mean, that's what's so amazing about being in the field is I can, I can set the scene for you, right? I can show you the context of the site so that when you see the art, it all makes more sense. At least that's the plan, right? So to give you a really quick idea then of what we're, what we're doing here is I just climbed up here and again, the, know your limits, no, <laughs> no what you climb, know what you can't climb. Um, that's half the battle here with caves or with dude climbing. Make sure, make sure you're comfortable. Don't push yourself beyond what you should be doing. Um, but in this case, I wanted to come up and see if I could confirm there was no more art up here because down lower, we found fantastic engravings that are, the color of them is as black as the rock around them. So again, they're old. They've completely oxidized, as we know. That means when it's returned to its natural color, we know that means they're definitely older. Also, the other thing that's really helpful for understanding their age is the fact that, and this is why I wanted to start up here, is that some of the engravings now are literally, so I'm so bad at meters, you can tell Canada, we're very confused. I'm going to tell you your feet. Probably like 30, 40 feet off the ground. And so there's no way you could make them now. And yet we're not in a place, like you remember that other episode where I showed you like a rock shelf and collapsed. This is not that. I think what it actually is, is the water coming down. So again, if we look behind, you can see that this is definitely a spot where water comes down. So over thousands of years, it's eroded out the floor. So down there. And so I suspect that maybe about a third of the way up or so, might have actually been more where the floor was back in the day. And so um, we can look at it again when we go down. But I just think I wanted to set the scene for you so you could understand what it is that we're looking at and then also how that can help give us a sense of the age which is sort of thinking about in geological time how long does it take for you know 20 feet of sandstone and rubble and dirt and sand to be eroded out of the way so i think that's kind of where that sets it up for you so let's go look at i'll see you in a minute when i get back down all right I safely scrambled down to floor level again. So that's where I just came from. Uh, before I was talking from way up there. Now I'm down here. Okay, but now I've set the stage for you because I'm going to turn the camera around and you can see this magnificent arch. And then if we keep going, look at that, the beautiful desert beyond. Okay, so amazing location. But imagine now if we look at the sloping floor, that probably was ground level at that time so you have to picture it being like way above my head which would make sense now when i turn the camera around and show you the so there's like those big horned gazelles up there there's other animals and it literally goes all across the arch all over the other side i mean some of it is literally like 50 feet above my head and yet it's sheer as we can see but if we manage if we manage, if we imagine the floor level being higher then suddenly that all makes more sense. So wanted to give you the, the sense, again, that sort of happy to rebuild the landscape and the world in your mind. Now I'm going to take you to another spot where there's some of those beautiful sheep down at floor level so you can actually see them. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, I'm around the corner from the arch area now. So we've just come in and this is like basically the next rock shelter over. Um, so part of the same rock complex. And um, behind me is a little cave. Um, I went in there. There are some pecked animals in there. So that's the engraving technique where they're actually impacting the rock to knock in the image. But they're pretty hard to see and I don't have the best light. So I'll show you one which is right outside. Do you see? Do you see that one right there? Very nice. Hey, um, little camel, I think, with that little hump on its back. So there we go. Um, that one's like middling old. If you look to, you can see how it's still slightly lighter colored than the actual original rock, but definitely reoxidizing nicely. So not new, um, but maybe not quite as old as what we're going to go look at right now, where what we've noticed in this area is that where the rock has that darker, either a blackish or like a dark red patina. So that extra hardened surface on the outside, the images last a lot better. Cause again, we're dealing with a lot of like, this is like 
This is just like sandstone, right? So it erodes super easy. So even if this was heavily decorated, we wouldn't necessarily be able to find it anymore. Um, but ancient folks when they were in this area also seem to know that. And so what we've got is that they made beautiful engraving into this harder reddish blackish patina. And so again, we can see the horns. We got some great animals here. We have a person. Um, but these are definitely older again. And we can tell they're older because if you look, they're the exact same color as the rock from whence they came. So when they would have been made, they were probably beautiful and bright and white and would have really stood out nicely. But now we're back to them matching the color of the rock. So we definitely know these are probably the oldest engravings in this vicinity and probably match with the really high ones that were on the other side in the arch. So again, this is a different area, different configuration. So we're finding them a bit lower down, but gives me a chance to see up close what I think we were seeing over there, but I would need to come back with climbing equipment to go look at them properly. So there we go. I think we'll wrap the episode here because if we look behind me, my colleagues are waiting with some tea, which is also one of the fun things about being in the field. So I think it's time to take a shy break as we call it over here. And I will see you in the next episode.